The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theatre Incorporated, presents The Quality of Mercy, starring Beulah Bondi and Jean Cagney. Your host, by transcription, Don McNeil. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Here is Don McNeil. Do you remember a day, maybe for some of you a day long ago, but a day to remember always, the day when you stood beside someone you love and pledged your faith in one another until death do us part. And on that day, together, you asked God to bless you, to bless your marriage. Well, that's a prayer that should be on our lips, not only on the day of marriage, but every day. And when we, as a family, join together and ask God to bless our home, we can be sure that he'll hear our prayers and help us in all difficulties. Pray together as a family. Make daily family prayer a family practice. And in your hearts and homes, there'll always be the peace and happiness that come with God's wonderful help. Don McNeil speaks to us again following this week's family theater story, The Quality of Mercy, starring Beulah Bondi and Jean Cagney. There are moments... Yes, there are moments, even the life of an old retired school teacher, and one of those moments is just about to arrive. In exactly 23 minutes, I'm going to turn on my radio and hear the voice of one of my former pupils across the miles and over the many years. They now call her the first lady of the theater, but I can still remember how she looked the day. Come in. Oh, good afternoon, girls. Good afternoon, good afternoon Miss Hawkins. Hawkins. I sent for you girls because I've come to a decision, and I think you two should hear it before anyone else. You, you've decided which one of us is going to play Portia. Yes, Jessica, I have. <laughs> And I feel I should tell you how I arrived at my choice. <laughs> Golly, I'm getting goosebumps on my goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me, Miss Hawkins. Uh, I'll try not to prolong your agony, Nancy. Your auditions were excellent, girls. You both read the part beautifully. I finally made my choice on the basis of seniority. Oh. I'm sorry, Jessica. You see, Nancy graduates at the end of this semester, but I'm counting on you for the lead in next year's play. Next year? But I won't be... Uh, I'm sorry. Congratulations, Nancy. I, I know you're going to be wonderful. Oh, thanks, Jessie. I wish... Oh, it's all right. May I go now, Miss Hawkins? Of course, Jessica. Stop in and see me tomorrow. Wait for me at the bicycle rack, Jessie. We'll ride home to... Oh, darn. I guess she didn't hear me. <laughs> Morning, Roger. Hey, you're sort of late. I've been waiting for you. I... Oh, I forgot. Forgot? Oh. Oh, yeah. We all saw the announcement on the bulletin board this morning, Jess. Oh. You have a lifesaver? Oh, thanks. I'm sorry you didn't get the part. Thank you, Roger. You really wanted it, didn't you, Jess? Oh, I... I'd do anything, but... <laughs> oh, well. Let's not talk about it, huh? Okay. Oh, gotta run. See you later, Jesse. Oh, uh... Don't make a date for the spring dance until you see me, huh? All right, Roger. <laughs> Don't forget now. I won't forget. You sent for me, Miss Hawkins? Yes. Yes, Jessica. Sit down. All right. Why, why what's the matter, Miss Hawkins? You seem upset. I am. I've just had a phone call from Mr. Hatcher. Mr. Hatcher? Nancy's father. Oh. Nancy is in the hospital. It seems she's had an accident. An accident? What? Yes. Is she badly hurt? Yes. But, oh. Well, she'll recover all right. 
However, she's out for the rest of the term, poor child. Oh, my goodness. Well, what was it? What happened? Well, she was riding home from school yesterday afternoon when something went wrong with the front wheel of her bicycle. She was thrown over the handlebars and into the path of an automobile. Oh, how horrible. Oh, poor Nancy. Fortunately, as you know, Mr. Hatcher is a wealthy man, and Nancy's going to receive the very best of care. Jessica, well, you know what this means to you, of course. You mean... Oh. You mean I'm Portia now? Yes. Oh. I know that you're sorry it had to happen like this, but, well, that's the way it is. Uh-huh. You'll do it, child. I... I guess I just have to do it, Miss Hawkins. Good. I'm going to be proud of you, Jessica, and the whole school is going to be proud of you. All right, all right, quiet, everyone. That's all for today. Rehearsal tomorrow at 3 o'clock sharp. Oh, Jessica. Yes, Miss Hawkins? Would you mind staying here a few minutes? I'd like to discuss something with you. Oh, yes, of course. Ah, peace and quiet. <laughs> it's <laughs> wonderful. Well, Jessica, I want to compliment you on your diligence. Your lines are letter perfect. Oh, thank you, Miss Hawkins. I've been studying them just about every chance I can get. Good. But I have a feeling that's not quite enough. What? Why, what do you mean? I, I thought you just said I that I... I know, I know, but... Good acting demands more than mere glibness, Jessica. I understand now, and I want you to understand. I'm telling you this because I think you're capable of giving more than just a, well, just a smooth, superficial performance. Oh, oh, I see. Is that what I've been doing? Yes, yes, you've been satisfactory, but I think you can be more than just that. Oh, much more. Oh, all right. Tell me what I have to do. Good girl. Jessica, the difference between a good performance and a great performance lies beyond the narrow limits of mere, oh, technical skill. It involves imagination, understanding, mature thinking, and applied intelligence. Oh. Oh, golly. <laughs> do you really think I have what it takes, Miss Hawkins? Yes, you have. I know you have, at least potentially. What you do with it is up to you. Now, I want you to think of Portia as a person. A living, breathing, flesh and blood person. Do you understand? I, I think so. Now, when you've done that, I want you to re-examine your role from this new viewpoint. Particularly your big speech in Act 4, Scene 1. Well, you mean the one that starts, The quality of mercy is not strained. Yes. It droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven upon the place beneath. Huh? That's right. Jessica, in that speech, you're asking man to be merciful to his fellow men. Oh. It's a plea that's as valid today as it was the day it was written. Those are inspired words. They demand an inspired reading. I... I'll try, Miss Hawkins. That's a large assignment, Jessica. And it's not easy. Oh, I know. But I'll help you all I can. You must understand this, though. In the final analysis... It all depends on one person, Jessica Barnes. And that's all the latest news, Nancy. I came just as soon as I found out you could have visitors. That's terribly sweet of you, Jessica. I know how busy and popular you must be now that you have the lead in the annual play. Oh, now, Nancy. Oh, you're just talking that way because you're in pain. I'm awfully sorry. He let me... Sorry? <laughs> I can just imagine how sorry you are. Things just couldn't be better as far as you're concerned. Well, that's not true. I'd give up anything to have you back the way you were before this happened. Oh, sure. Would you give up the lead in the play? I... Yes. Yes, I would. Of course I would. Uh, what's the matter with you, Nancy? I just can't understand why here, you're talking... Here, here, here. Now, now, now. What's going on? Oh. Well, hello, Mr. Hatcher. I... I was just leaving. Well, now, don't you run off just because I came in, child. I'm sure that my Nancy would much rather have one of her young friends for company Goodbye, instead Goodbye, of... Jessica. Good night, Nancy. I hope you... I'm sure you'll feel better tomorrow. Good night, Mr. Hatcher. Well, good night, uh, uh, Jessica. Nancy, you were very rude to that girl. 
Particularly after she was nice enough to come out to the hospital and pay you a visit. Nice enough to come out here and gloat over me, you mean? What? Well, why, I'm surprised at you. You mustn't say things like that. Didn't my accident strike you as well... Well, odd, Daddy? Why, no, I thought... What do you mean? Um, here, here, sit down on the bed. Well, all right. Now, just what are you driving at? My bike was brand new, Daddy. Why did the front wheel fold up that way? Nancy, you're not suggesting that... Why would anyone do a rotten thing like that? Listen, Daddy, I'm not making any accusations, but just listen. Mr. Hatcher, are you sure you know what you're saying? Yes, I do, Miss Hawkins. I thought it was unbelievable, too, at first, but now Don't I'm... you realize that you're basing this charge on the flimsiest sort of circumstantial evidence? It fits, Miss Hawkins. It hangs together very well when you think about it. I know. I've been doing nothing but think about it for the past 24 hours. But, but what would be her motivation for... The chance for the lead in the school play, or her revenge against the girl who took that chance away from her. <laughs> Preposterous. I know Jessica too well to believe that. Do you really know her so well? Do you, for example, know that this is her last term in school, that this is her last chance for the honor and the glory that, that goes with the lead in an annual play? I'm afraid you're mistaken about that, too, Mr. Hatcher. Jessica doesn't graduate until next year. Jessica is not graduating, Miss Hawkins. She's leaving school to take a full-time job at Haley's department store. Oh. Well, I... I didn't know that. Now, look, Miss Hawkins, I'm not saying that this accident was the result of a vicious and well-conceived plot. On the contrary, I'm willing to believe that it was all the unfortunate result of uh, an unhappy schoolgirl's momentary peak. Well, what do you want, Mr. Hatcher? Just this. Call the girl in and allow me to question her. No. You can't expect me to, to let her get away with this. It's your duty as a teacher to... I think I'm fully aware of my duties as a teacher, Mr. Hatcher. Yeah, you uh, refuse to cooperate. Huh? I refuse to cooperate with you in your attempt to... to pillory a defenseless girl. Uh, very well. I will overlook your unfortunate choice of words, but I'm afraid you'll have to accept the consequences of your refusal to assist me. Don't threaten me, Mr. Hatcher. Well, I'm warning you, Miss Hawkins. This isn't going to end here. Good day. <laughs> You, I heard every word of it. I was right outside of Miss Hawkins' office when Nancy's father came. And Jessica Barnes was seen fooling around with Nancy's bike. Isn't that... How do you like that? If she weren't a girl, we'd take care of her in a hurry. It's the dirtiest thing I ever heard of. Any guy who has anything to do with a girl like that. I'm against malicious gossip, but I don't believe it. But, well, where there's smoke, there must be... <laughs> Oh, oh, what am I going to do? It's just like a nightmare. Oh, don't, don't, my dear. I should have known this would happen. Oh, suddenly they all hate me. How can they believe I'd do such a horrible thing? Oh, don't, dear. I'm your friend, Jessica, and I believe in you. That may not be much of a consolation, oh, but I... No. I know. But we're the only two people who don't think I'm a criminal. Oh, don't. Don't say that, Jessica. It's not true. <laughs> Calm down, Auntie. Oh. We'll work it out some way. I'll leave school. I have to anyway at the end of the term. Oh. Oh, you never told me that. Well, I didn't want you to give me the part in the play just because... just because you felt sorry for me. I see. I'm an orphan now, you know, and... My aunt says I'm old enough to go to work and support myself. And she's right, too. I don't want anybody feeling sorry for me. Not even Jessica Barnes. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. oh, I see what you mean. All right. All right, I'm through crying about it. That's the spirit. <laughs> now, how about the dress rehearsal this afternoon? The whole school will be there, you know. Oh... Oh, I'd forgotten about that. Well, maybe they don't like me, but I'm sure going to make them like my Porsche. Oh, that's the way I hoped I'd hear you talk. You run along now, dear. I have to pay a visit to a certain prominent businessman, but I'll see you at the theater. Jessica. 
Hey, Jess. Oh. <laughs> What's your rush? Oh, I'm sorry, Roger. I've got to get over to the theater. Oh, well, this will only take a minute. It's about our date for the dance. Oh. Well, it's all right, Roger. I, I understand. Understand? <laughs> understand what? Well, then, under the circumstances, you can't very oh, well... Oh, now, look, Jessie, all I want to know is what color dress you're going to wear. What? Yeah, you see, I want to get you a corsage, but I don't know whether to get roses or gardenias, and I figured oh, if I knew what color the dress was going to... You mean you're going to take me to the dance? Going to take... Now, you listen to me, Jessica. If you're trying to tell me you've forgotten oh, our date... Oh, no, no, I haven't forgotten. Hmm. I... It's just that... Oh, haven't you heard all the things they're saying about me and the accident? Oh, that... that old junk. Yeah, Harry Wallace told me a whole bunch of stuff this morning. Got to hand it to him. He sure is shifty. But don't... At that, I would have caught him if he hadn't dodged into those bushes behind the science lab. You know, somebody ought to cut the darn things down. They're a menace to... Oh. Hey. Oh. Oh. oh, Jesse. Gosh, that's the first time you ever kissed. Hey, wait, how about the corsage? Oh, women. <laughs> So you see, Mr. Hatcher, this child is suffering, and suffering bitterly because of a crime she didn't commit. It's a terrible thing, and you're responsible Ms. for it. Miss Hawkins, I've made time for you in the midst of a busy day, and I've listened to you patiently. I appreciate that. Very well. In the first place, I did not intend, nor did I expect, that this information would become public property at this time. Now, you believe that, don't you? Yes, yes, I do. All right, thank you. Now, exactly what do you want me to do about it? I want you to produce concrete evidence of Jessica's guilt and publicly charge her with it, if you can. And you don't think I can? No. Well, you're mistaken. It happens that I have anticipated your wish. Joe Johnson, the bicycle dealer, has been out of town. He got back this morning, and he's checking up right now. You're going to get your wish this very afternoon, perhaps. Very well. I'm going to the theater, and I'll be there for the rest of the day. I'll appreciate it if you'd call me after you hear from Mr. Johnson. Certainly. You'll be the first to know. Good day, Miss Hawkins. <laughs> All right, quiet, everybody. On stage for Act Three. Ready? Curtain. Now, what news on the Rialto? Why, yet it lives there unchecked. That Antonio hath the ship of rich lady wrecked on the narrow seas. Uh, Miss Hawkins. The good winds, Miss Hawkins. I think they call the place. Uh, oh, yes, a Mr. Hatcher. Yes, there's some place where we can be alone for a few minutes. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I can't leave. Now. But it's important. It's important. Shh, keep your voice down. What is it? Oh, oh, so. You can go right through here, Mr. Hatcher, between these curtains. Uh, boys and girls, uh, your attention, please, boys and girls. I know the show isn't over yet, but there's something I think all of you should hear. Most of you know who I am, Nancy Hatch's father. I'm out here because I've made a bad mistake, but I don't think I'm the only one. A lot of you are in it with me. I'm talking about that bicycle accident that put my daughter in the hospital. Uh, most of us didn't think it was an accident, and I was ready to put the blame on the girl... The girl who is playing the lead here this afternoon, Jessica Barnes. I was wrong, very wrong. I've just found out that the bicycle was defective. It was supposed to have been returned to the factory and was shipped to me by mistake. So you see, Jessica had nothing to do with this whole thing. Yet I blamed her and so did most of you. We caused her a lot of suffering and a lot of heartache. Destroying somebody's reputation with false idle talk is, is awfully easy, isn't it? All this happened many years ago, but it doesn't seem that way to me. I still remember it as if... Oh, wait, wait a minute, the radio. Oh, I do hope I haven't missed... In presenting the first lady of the theater, Miss Jessica Barnes. Oh. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. My performance this evening will consist of an excerpt from a role I haven't played in many years, but one that I have never forgotten. 
Miss Hawkins, my first coach, and my dearest friend will remember it too. This speech from Act Four, scene one of my first play, is for her. <laughs> The quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven upon the place beneath. It is twice blessed. It blesseth him that gives and him that takes. Tis mightiest in the mightiest. It becomes the throned monarch better than his crown. His scepter shows the force of temporal power the attribute to awe and majesty, wherein doth sit the fear and dread of kings. But mercy is above this sceptered sway. It is enthroned in the hearts of kings. It is an attribute to God himself. And earthly power doth then show likest gods when mercy seasons justice. I guess there isn't one of us, but has to admit that at times we got to worrying. We worry about a lot of things, business affairs, our jobs, our future. And when we pick up the papers and see that one marriage in three goes on the rocks, when we see reports about juvenile delinquency, we even begin to worry about our own family. Yes, there are many things today that tend to separate a family. And that's why we need all the help we can have to bring our families together. Now, there's nothing that will bring a family closer in unity and understanding than the common bond of trust and faith in God. The simple expression of that faith the daily practice of family prayer is the greatest inspiration and example that we can give our children. Family prayer can and will bring God's blessing on our home, the blessing of harmony and understanding, because a family that prays together stays together. This is Don McNeil saying good luck and God bless you. Our grateful thanks to our host, Don McNeil, to Beulah Bondi and Jean Cagney for their appearances, and to Urban Lieberman for writing our play. Original music was scored and conducted by Max Terr. This production of Family Theater Incorporated was directed by David Young. Brief portions were transcribed. The supporting cast included Patty Chapman, Paul McVeigh, Roland Morris, Virginia Eiler, Gloria Grant, Sam Edwards, and George Peroni. Next week, our family theater star will be Anne Revere in Altar of Freedom. Your host will be Roddy McDowell. This series of the family theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program and by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Be with us next week at the same time when Anne Revere and Roddy McDowell will star on family theater. Your announcer, Merrill Ross. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>